Oh, well it's a roaster today. I think it's the hottest day of the year actually, 33, 34 degrees. So I'm sitting in the shade to do this. <laughs> There's a nice little breeze under here, uh, but out there it's red hot. Um, I'm actually on the church lake in Essex. First time I've been on here for a while, but it's really nice to be back here. It's a, it's a cracking lake, it really is. Some lovely fish and uh, yeah, despite the heat, um, I had a little bit of action. I'll tell you more about that at the end. Um, but yeah, talking of the heat, you know, I still remember the summer of 76, which a lot of people have been talking about. Um, yeah, it was a good summer, I remember it well. Uh, I was only young then. And uh, you know, people will be remembering this summer for years to come. Um, funny enough, the lakes seem to be faring better this year, whether the water table's higher before uh, all this hot spell was, has come to us, I don't know. But um, yeah, the lakes for some reason seem to be faring a lot better than what they did all them years ago. So yeah, happy days, plenty of fishing for us. But um, yeah, you know, a lot of people actually ask me, you know, if I still fish in England. Of course, I do loads of trips away all the time, and uh, I love that. I love the adventure of travelling away and fishing big foreign waters, uh, meeting new friends. But um, you know, there's there's not enough time in the year to do everything, unfortunately. So something has to give, and you know, I don't tend to do as much English fishing as I have done in the past, but I still like to do it. And yeah, I do video some of it sometimes, but it's not enough to make a whole blog out of. So what I've sort of done this time is, um, yeah, try to piece together a few little bits and pieces of those trips and uh, some of the other stuff that where I never had enough material to make a whole blog, if you like. So yeah, there's a little bit of English stuff in there. There's a nice trip to Germany, actually, where I caught some really special fish. And uh, I didn't intend doing much filming, so I didn't get a lot done, but I got the fish on film, which I'll show you soon, because they are absolute stunners. Uh, but yeah, the UK stuff, you know, um, I suppose it started uh, in the spring of this year, um, up at Acton Burnell. And every year I do like a, a guiding session with Paul Meehan. And it's either a week or it's two weeks. This year it's just one week and we hire out the whole of the, the complex, have people up for either two and a half days or for the full week in a lot of cases, and we have a great time up there. You know, we really do. There's always plenty of good fish caught, uh, nice people, we have a good laugh. Um, but luckily, I managed to get the rods out myself in that time. You know, we let everyone else choose their swims, have a draw for swims, and then we take what's left. So. You know, it's obviously not an ideal situation for me, but I'm not really there for, for my own fishing. You know, it's the other guys that it's more important for them. But, of course, I like to get the rods out myself. Once everyone had chosen their swim, there was a guy who went in the island swim and then decided to move out across to the other side because his mate was across there. Um, knowing the island's a good one, I jumped straight into that. So, yeah, I had a, I had a good swim. Uh, got plenty of options in there and thinking about the fish I've caught there in the past I've, I've caught them out to the right and open water uh, down in front really uh, but really the, the dam wall the outbounds part of the dam wall it's always going to be the best bit and you know outbounds banks are always the best bit uh, and so yeah I had plenty to go at really um, bait wise you're going to see a common sort of theme to this all the way through that everything sort of seems to revolve around scopic squid because uh, you know that's what I've been using all the time but there's a lot of different versions in in amongst that scopic squid range so and, and you know as it turned out it wasn't planned but as it turned out I would used quite a few different sort of uh, items in that range through the sessions so it was, it, it's interesting to see when I looked back through it, I thought, oh, you know, I use cultured here and pop-ups there and snowmans, uh, the extra hard hard-ons in Germany. Back to Acton, and I was in the swim and looking out to the damn wall. First thing I saw was a fish show, and there's certain areas on that lake where they always seem to show, particularly along the damn wall. There's, there's one tree, one bush in the middle. And it's where the old sluice is, the old outlet, and everyone who goes in that swim fishes that spot. 
And what I did notice was that, although there was some showing on the dam wall, that where it goes down to the slope into the deepest water, there was more showing on that sort of area at the bottom of the slope rather than close in. It's always tempting to try and get as close in as you can under the bush, under the dam wall. It's what everyone tries to do. It's what I've done in the past. But to, to hedge my bets a little bit, what I did was put one by the bush and one further out at the bottom of the slope in the deepest water on the lake, you know, and in spring I would expect them to be in the shallows. But there we go, you never know, you've got to fish where your instincts tell you to go and, and where the fish are telling you to go. If they're showing on an area, you know, it would be silly not to put a bait there, really. So that's what I did. Yeah, so anyway, next morning, about four o'clock, uh, I've just woken up by Paul who was fishing across in what they call the wheel, wheelbarrow swing. God, I just heard a great big fish jump behind me there. That sounded nice. Anyway, back to the story. Um, a swan went through Paul Meehan's line and I heard his alarm, it woke me up. And just as I was sort of coming to and looking out, one of mine shot off and, and it was the rod that was at the bottom of the slope. Uh, and there we go, first one of the session, a little scope X squid bottom bait. Saw fish showing yesterday and put one out to them and uh, just rattled off this morning with this one on the end. 24-12, so well happy with that. Not an easy lake, so always good to get one. And so yeah, yeah I was off the mark, I was really happy about that. Every, every evening, every morning while I was sitting in the swim, around to my left, there's like a, an overhanging canopy of trees and I could hear fish showing in there. Now the problem with that is that to the outside of that canopy is the area that you fish to from the wheelbarrow where Paul Meehan was. But about midweek, it just so happened that Paul was opening a, a new shop and uh, had to go off and organise a, a few bits and pieces for that. So he, so he left, you know, which was a shame. So I, you know, I was enjoying Paul's company, but at the same time I thought to myself, now I can get a, a rod in under this canopy. And uh, literally, I put one down there and 20 minutes it was off. You know, the fish thought they were safe under there because Paul couldn't reach them. Uh, 20 minutes it was off and, and it was a lovely, long, sort of chestnut colour, common again. Uh, God, I did it scrap, real good scrap. Uh, and yeah, it was great. You know, I, I now had a, another area to go at. The first fish, I was just fishing a single 20 mil bottom bait straight out of the bag on the rig uh, with the, the claw, size 6 claw on a coated hook length. Just simple basic bottom bait rig. For the fish under the canopy what I did was just put a, a cultured, uh, they're, they're basically a wafter bait, the cultured scope X squids and just a few pellets around it. You know I wanted a bit of attraction but only one bait there just to get the bite. No, it's only an underarm flick, under the branches, a few little pellets, sat back, and again, it was only about 20 minutes, well, off it went, and uh, another lovely common. So there we go, third one of the week, another common as well, which is unusual. Whew, saw it show, just round the corner, put a bait on its head, and uh, half hour later, off it went. You know, they're all lovely fish up there, and... Uh, um, really enjoyed my time, I always do up there, you know, they're cracking bunch of lads every year. Love doing it with Paul and uh, yeah, love nicking a fish or two along the way if I can do it and on this occasion it worked out quite well so yeah, happy days, I'll look forward to doing that again next year. <laughs>
this lovely club lake that you joined this year. And, you know, Mike showed us to the swims and uh, we began to set everything up. So, a new adventure. We've stopped off in Germany for a few days, just getting all the gear out of the van. Put the Titans up, ready to go. And the lake is there. That is beautiful. It's a lovely German club lake, but we've been granted a, a temporary permit on here for a few days. And so we're going to have a go. Just going to get the rods out. It looks absolutely lovely. No one else here. Just us. There's Mike down there. <laughs> Getting everything set up. One of my best friends. Brilliant. There we go. Work to do. But good times. There, there was two particular spots. There was one that was very close in just to my right actually. Um, you, you could underarm flick it but um, we had boats so it's, I prefer to use a boat to place everything precisely and people say oh you know don't you ever cast um, well only when I need to actually <laughs> if I can use a boat then you know the placement is so much more precise and so much better so yeah I love I love using a boat to put baits out so that's what I did even though it was close and the other spot was on the other side which was what turned out to be the main banker spot on the lake really there's a fallen tree in the lake and uh, oh, the fish are just drawn to it like magnets like they always are and and so um, that was two spots yeah so there we go so we're all set up it's, it's a warm day like this really we're sitting under the trees in the shade got to evening time Mike was going to do dinner he's a brilliant cook Mike so he, he was going to do us a nice meal all of a sudden one of the alarms has, has gone off and uh well have a look this is what was on the end wow what a cracking start <sighs> only got rods out i suppose an hour and a half ago maybe two hours dropped one right in the margins just round to the right there and uh mike had said it was a good spot sure enough Oh, I'm out of breath, but it's just gone off, and what a lovely fish, lovely old German warrior, uh, 30, 36 and a half pound, God, proper old warrior this one, there we go, single scope X squid, 20 mil, oh, got to go, yeah, and of course, would you believe, literally just holding the fish up for the pictures, and another alarm sounded and it was a bit of a panic because I knew it was the one that was fishing locked up to that fallen tree and I had to get to it quick so I jumped on the rod and uh, Mike and Joan were there and they, they looked after the other fish okay um, so I was out doing battle again The fish, oh yeah, the fish is right in the middle of it all. I can see it. Well, that was a bit of a mad panic. Just photographing the last one, which was 36 and a half, and uh, it's okay, he has gone safely back now. But poor, the other take was this one, which is 38 pound. What a lovely old German mirror this is. Absolutely gorgeous old fish from the far bank snag, which Mike put me onto. He said it'd do me a bite. Sure enough, didn't take long, did it? Didn't think it was this big as it goes, but it got weeded. Had to go in the boat, but wow, what a fish! What a first evening! Well, happy. Now what he, what he had told me about 
the lake Mike was um, there is quite a few crayfish in there and it, I noticed there's quite a few little roach as well little shoals of sort of small roach but they're bait nibblers basically you know it'd be alright for a few hours but overnight softer baits they could be gone in the morning so he, he did advise to try and use harder baits if possible so that was where the the hard-ons came in a tub of those uh, 20 mil hard-ons so I made up a snowman with the 20 mil bottom bait and a, you know the usual little 15 mil pop up on top uh, scopic squid pellet scopic squid flake and of course the freebies as well so I was putting out a fair bit of of each around the spots um, spots themselves were quite small on each area but um, I was putting a fair bit out there through the night I caught a catfish a, quite a biggish one there's a few in there um, I didn't photograph it I put that back um, but in the morning I thought now I'm just gonna redo all the rods you know it was I was awake quite early and I thought just make sure they're all all right so uh, and sure enough the hook baits were all right I took them back out to the spots refreshed the bait and it was about 11 o'clock in the morning again the uh, the snag tree rod on the far side that's gone off and pulled in this fish and I thought I mean you know it's it's heavy it must be weeded up that's what I thought I thought oh, it's weeded up so uh, yeah get in the boat gone out in the boat and as I've got closer to it I could see the line moving I thought it's, it's not weeded up this is uh, just all fish basically uh, we couldn't see it and I didn't see it for ages but I, I knew it was a good one. I knew it was a good one. and uh, yeah sure enough when it did surface I thought that is one of the big ones that is for sure um, I couldn't remember from the pictures you know which was which but I just knew it was a good one and it, it must have fought 20 minutes out in the boat it was dragging me around everywhere and I, I thought well just take your time be patient and eventually it'll all turn out right which it did it got the fish went back to the bank and Mike had been watching all this and, and he came over and uh, said let me have a look <laughs> so he looked in the net looked at the tail he went yeah that's king of the lake sure enough biggest fish in the lake biggest fish in the lake first day on now <laughs> and uh, yeah sometimes I do get lucky and there we go king of the lake was in my net would you believe it we sat here talking about the fish that are in here orange tail nano the big common and especially king of the lake <laughs> there's two maybe three fifties in here I'm not sure but the big one is king of the lake oh and it's sat here right here right now right. and it it felt like a big chunk right from the start I went out in the boat because I thought it was weeded it wasn't weeded at all it was just a great big lump of a carp on the end 55 pound 12 ounce biggest fish in the lake and I am well well chuffed with that the sort of days passed by days were actually better than the nights on there I caught most fish during days which is great that suited me perfectly and uh, caught some absolute crackers on there there was one common that was 36 uh, it was just a wood carving absolutely gorgeous thing it was um, but you know there, there was lots of nice ones. I caught a few small ones there's some stockies in there and caught a couple of those but yeah for the last night uh, my Nash teammate Mark Vosen he was due to come down he's a friend of Mark, uh, Mike's as well so he came down so it was only fair really that I passed the spot onto him the hot spot and so yeah give it to Mark and he I think he had three fish off it no monsters um, but it was still working the spot and I moved mine it just I found a little bar out in open water um, had another nice common that night just over 30 so we, we all had fish we all caught loads of fish and yeah we had a fantastic time like I say you know we always enjoy our, our trips over to sea Mike and Simone uh, and so yeah happy days you know it's really really good times with them uh, and this had just been a, another one of those it
And so back to England. And uh, yeah, we've got this fantastic hot summer, the hottest summer for years, probably, well, the hottest summer since that 1976. And uh, you know, what I hadn't done for a while, you know, okay, I hadn't done as much English fishing as I'd like to do anyway. What I really missed out on was floater fishing. Uh, you know, it's just nice to get over there when I get a chance, when there's a few days spare at home, just to nip over and, and do a bit. It's not always long sessions, you know, what I did this year in particular was just nipping over with a couple of rods or most of the time just one rod, one floater rod, a bit of gear, just spending a couple of hours over there. No more than probably three hours, that was the longest I was there. Uh, and sure enough, I went round, first of all, went round to the out of bounds area on, on the lake because if they're going to eat anywhere, they're going to be, it's going to be there as always. Threw a few mixers and, and these fish were like, oh, it's like my pond at home. You know, I can throw food in, they're washed, they're there, like little piranhas. And these were the same, you know, they, they were on it straight away. So, okay, I, I couldn't fish from there, but, you know, it was a confidence booster. I knew if I'd find a few fish out in the open somewhere, they were going to have it. And so I had a wander around and I ended up in the bottom bay of, of the lake. Um, and there's one little bar down in this bay uh, and it, it's got weed on it this year. It doesn't always have weed, but this year it, it has got weed on it. And as I got there, I could just see these fish and uh, put out a few mixers, let them drift down onto this weed. Sure enough, <laughs> there they were straight away. So happy days, yeah. Got my rod sorted and got fishing. Uh, yeah, got a few feeding on the top there. Still some taking mixers out there. But yeah, my first go on the top this year and I've, I'm into one anyway. I've got to land it yet, but decent little mirror. And it was quite spooky. It took a while to actually get a, a tape. They come up and mouthed it a few times, but that is the frustrating thing with floater fishing, but it went in the end. Go. Got one. Like so. There we go. Lovely little Mayfield's mirror. Well pleased with that. First one this year off the top. Lovely. Well, back on the floaters and uh, they're all around it. Oh, is he going to have that? No. That was my bait. Oh. <sighs> I couldn't help but strike at that one, I don't think he had it though. Still there though, still having it. Oh. Makes such a big splosh, but it doesn't actually seem to spook them. Short that lot. Don't mind them if they come closer though. <sighs> Frustrating trouble is there's a guy already been in here today and had a couple so they're going to be spooky. I do think there's a chance of getting one though. Wow. Walk 
firecracker. I mean, it's a, it was a funny fight actually, sort of slapping about and flapping about. But um, a torpedo common, nice 20 pounder. All right, we'll just have a, a quick little look through what I'm doing. Here's a, a scope at squid pop up on the hook on a little floater claw. They are lovely and light actually for floater fishing and the weight of the hook does seem to make a difference when they're coming up and mouthing it. A heavy hook seems to make the hook bait act a bit strange to them. So uh, yeah, floater claws are excellent. Anyway, just a little one. Um, 10 pound hook length, well 10 pound main line and 10 pound hook length. And uh, I've got the, well it's, a, it's about a six foot hook length. And I've got the small uh, controller on the bolt machine. I've been using the, the medium one quite a lot, but this is actually quite a small area, so the small one actually suits it better. Just for flicking it out on the edge of the, the branches, just across the bay here. So there we go, that's it. All simple stuff as always, but you know, that's what always works. Looked one straight away, but it has gone through the thick bit of the weed. Seems to be moving now. Yeah, there we go. Let's see him. <laughs> yeah, nice one. Whew. Oh, he's got the weed over his eyes. I wonder if I can sneak him in before he realises. woken up now he's got the weed off his face nice fish actually there was only one fish here taking a few bits two or three others sort of moved off but he come up and just had it straight away that bit of weed can go over his face again might help Lovely stuff. Whoa, blimey. That was all a bit quick and heavy. Oh, that's a nice fish. I thought I'd nip over earlier today. The sun's only just come out, actually. It's been a foggy, sort of misty morning, but the sun's up now, it's getting warm. This was the only fish having them at the moment. But he took the update straight away. There you go, I reckon he's 23, 24. Happy days. But with floater fishing, it's almost the excitement of getting the bite that overrides everything. I suppose when you do it enough, you, you try and pick out certain fish, bigger fish. But for me, you know, um, I just wanted to get bites, that was it, you know, seeing those fish, those lips come up around the mixer and take it, didn't really matter what size they were, um, as long as it happened. It can be incredibly frustrating sometimes, fishing for any fish on the surface, but when it's going well, it's, it's got to be one of the, the best methods of fishing out there, it's so exciting. And yeah, all those feelings, all that excitement really come flooding back. Every single bite give me that same buzz. You know, once you'd hooked them, played them in, it was like playing a, a fish as normal, but seeing them taking the mixers and getting closer to the bait and then a few, a few little dodgy takes, mistakes, and, and then you get that one that takes it. And well, it's almost like an electric shot when you actually hook it and think, wow, I'm in. Um, 
Yeah, brilliant stuff. Absolutely loved it. And uh, it's what it's for. It's what sunshine's for. A bit of floater fishing. So no, it's, it's been really good. Really good. Yeah, so that sort of uh, brings us up to date, really. You know, like I say, I'm here on the Church Lake. I've been here um, three nights I've done now on here. Four nights. And, you know, even though it's absolutely roasting hot and I thought I'm not going to get much in these conditions, um, I've ended up with a few fish. I've had eight, eight bites now. Landed six fish. Very weedy out there. Um, but there's some crackers out there for sure. Um, my first fish was a lovely common uh, 30 pound A. Um, I've had a 29 and a half mirror, uh, a 27 mirror, and a couple of smaller ones as well. But um, they're lovely fishing here. It's yeah, hugely enjoyable fishing. It really is. It, it's a lovely lake. Uh, been looked after really well here and, and caught some lovely fish. Well, the weather that we've waited weeks for finally arrived in the night. Big storms, and uh, it's brightened up now, but big winds now, big stormy winds. But um, just had a, a lovely Church Lake mirror, 27 pound, and a great way to finish what's been a great week on here. It's been lovely to uh, go through some of the stuff that's happened this year and uh, talk about it in Germany and uh, some of my UK stuff. And it's lovely to finish up with a mirror like this on what is a cracking venue. So I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you next time. Take care, won't you? <laughs>